Hello, everybody. You're listening to Accounting Makes Sense, an MJ the Tutor podcast, and I'm your host, MJ. In this podcast, we are focused on helping accounting students all over the world by offering a quick warm up on various accounting and business topics, hoping to generate bigger discussions and conversations around them. If you are studying SEMA right now, this episode is for you. For this episode, I'm going to offer a few tidbits on the operational case study, the OCS, for August 2022. A few months back, I started a podcast episode format where I offer tidbits on the pre-seen materials that have just come out. So I did one for the MCS and I did one for the SCS. And now it is the OCS's turn. So These tidbits are like clues, for lack of a better word. Clues into the world of the pre-scene company. Now, I know for this pre-scene, SEMA released the materials a while back because it covers both the May 2022 and August 2022 exam sessions. So if you've already gotten a copy of the OCS pre-scene, you've probably already started formulating your own thoughts and opinions about the pre-scene company. And that's all right. This episode is not going to set out to disagree with you. But you should still stick around for this episode since you may gain an alternative perspective on the matter. I always tell students that different perspectives on a case study is great. It helps you grow as a case study student helps you analyze the situations better, faster, as well as provide you with information that you may not have thought about before. This is what makes case studies exciting and interesting as you get to immerse yourself in these stories and situations. Anyway, let's do our three tidbits from the OCS pre-scene of August 2022. A background information is that our pre-scene company is a company called Meals at Home. They provide a subscription-based service preparing and delivering meal kits in a fictitious European country called Newland. Our first tidbit to share for today is that this company is unlisted, which in itself is not really an exciting information. But we should note that the company has angel investors and venture capitalists in its structure. This may be a sign that the company could be ready to go public in the future. This may come up as a scenario at the exams. There are a couple of points to remember when a company becomes public. A listed company will certainly be bound to put together its financials as per IFRS rules. Corporate governance is also another theme that is popular when a company becomes listed. The makeup of the board of directors also comes under scrutiny, looking at perhaps how to get non-executives on the board, and many more. As I mentioned, it's not really something out of the ordinary. Most times when SEMA mentions unlisted company, there is some mention of how capital is structured in the business. This is just to give us a better view of the pre-scene company and uh, understand how, uh, where they got their money from. But I didn't think this was interesting since Meals at Home is up against a couple of multinational companies with worldwide sales, which means that they have parent companies overseas, likely. Our second tidbit to share for today is that this is a technology-based and driven company. Similar to the first tidbit, this is nothing new and innovative. There is a bigger reliance on technology and innovation, as well as some pitfalls with regards to security and errors that we must look out for. Automation is also another area to be looking at. Some big clues are that Meals at Home is on a subscription-based model. In our world today, we are already familiar with these kinds of products or service offerings. Think of Netflix, Microsoft, and many others. With this kind of revenue model, the IT functions within the business should be topmost priority. Another area, as mentioned, is automation. We do have an assembly line putting together the meal kits. 
automation can happen. This information is also specifically mentioned in the news articles towards the end of the pre-seed material, giving it some more importance that it is one way for the company to innovate as well as perhaps save some labor costs. We will talk a little bit more about the cost side when we get to our next tidbit since it is an important one. Our last tidbit is the one about cost. There are many signs that pricing and costing will become a big part of this pre-scene. Number one, we know that competition is fierce in this market. It is mentioned that competition is intense when it comes to pricing. So there is a constant re-evaluation of whether we are at the right prices or not. It is very easy to lose customers because of price points. According to the pre-scene, customers are enticed to switch providers because of offers and discounts. So this is definitely something we should be noting. Number two reason for cost importance is that the financials show that the company is suffering a net loss for the year, two years in a row actually. We've been losing monies and therefore it becomes imperative now for the company to turn this around, looking at ways to cut costs or increase prices. Since we know that there is already pressure on pricing, we would focus most efforts on getting profits through cost reduction. Because of this net loss as well, there may likely be a reassessment of the standard costing model that the company is on. It is highly likely that the pricing and costing is not quite aligned. Meal kits do not cost the same depending on ingredients and items being included in each meal category or type. So there may be a push to look at this from an activity-based costing angle, ABC. We may find out that we are underpricing some of our better meals and overpricing others. The number three reason is that there are a lot of information regarding the costing of the meals. Definitely pricing and cost will be a big part of this exam, so do watch out for that. Anyways, that is it for me today. I hope you found this episode helpful to your OCS preparation. And maybe perhaps you had the same thoughts as me when it came to the OCS pre-scene of August 2022. That is good since it confirms your hunches. And if you had some other different ones, then that is also good since it gives you a different perspective on the matter. As always... Thank you for listening to Accounting Makes Sense. I am your host, MJ the Tutor. If you're keen to connect to be updated with the arrival of the next episode of this podcast or find SEMA resources online, please head on over to my website, www.mjthetutor.com. You can also hit subscribe on whichever platform you are using to listen to this podcast. If you want to connect with me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, under the name MJ the Tutor. And I hope to see you again next time. Ciao for now! <music>